So the first thing you want to do is come up to the right hand corner uh, and we currently have our items tab here and just next to that we have a tab called shader tree. I'm going to click that guy and inside of here we have five things. Now the one that we're interested in right now is this top option which is render. If I click the render option itself uh, we get two tabs down here or a couple tabs down here, three uh, that are quite interesting. So for instance the render camera, the render frame range, the render resolution, uh, some render settings here such as region and bucket width. We've also got settings for things like anti-aliasing, ray tracing of shadows, uh, subdivision rates and displacement settings. And then finally we have a global illumination tab which you can see currently I've set on. Now if we roll this down, inside of here we have four things. The top two are actually render passes or render outputs. So things like uh, your reflection output, your spec output, your final color in this case and my alpha. Now I'm going to deal with those a little bit further in the render section, so we're just going to ignore them for now. But underneath here we have base shader and base material. Now to explain this even more fully, I'm quickly going to come over into my viewport and use this button here, Ray GL. And this is slightly getting ahead of myself here, but it will really help me uh, kind of show off this texturing method. Uh, I'm going to turn this on and what will happen is our entire viewport here, our entire 3D viewport, is going to turn into a preview render. Now you may have heard about Modo's preview render and it's up here in the render menu here and it actually opens as a separate window uh, and this at the moment is we're looking through the camera view which isn't quite centered on our model so we can't see it in there but I'll cover this in a bit more detail later on but the Ray GL option is going to allow us to actually model and zoom into any part of our objects and see the effect that the shaders are having the lighting is having and the environment is having uh, so it's absolutely completely Absolutely massively useful uh, for things like look dev, for setting up of textures, te setting up of shaders, I mean even things like UVing, painting and sculpting as well. So with that done we're now going to be able to see the results of our shader live here in the viewport. So I'm going to come over and introduce you to a few of these things. Now first of all it's worth noting that Modo's way of handling the shader system is very different from other applications in the fact that it is an override based system. Now to show you that, I'm going to come into my base material and in here we have a lot of properties, so diffuse color, specular amount, reflection, etc. We also have a material trans section over here uh, including things like transparency amount, surface amount, luminosity and I can just click these little two arrows at the bottom to see all the other options in here as well. Uh, but what we're going to do is go back to our material ref section and I'm going to change the diffuse color and I can do that in a few ways. I can click and drag on any of these numbers, just drag left and right in here. Uh, and that will change it. Alternatively I can just click on this option and we'll bring up our nice color picker. So I'm going to choose a nice uh, bright green for now and just click off to get rid of that. Now I said a second ago this is an override based system so what do I really mean by that? Well essentially Modo is treating this like it's a stack. Uh, you can think of it a little bit like Photoshop. So at Photoshop layer stack you may have a background layer at the bottom and anything you put on top of that background layer is going to override the layers below it. And that is very similar to the way that it works in Modo. So inside my base material I've set all these settings, specular amount, reflection amount, diffuse color importantly, and I'm now going to override just the diffuse color. I'm going to come up and add layer, I'm going to come down to uh, processing and add in a constant. And immediately our model changes, our preview goes completely black. And the reason for this is that the constant is set to override the diffuse color parameter with whatever color I put in down here. So I could change this to red if I wanted. And if I toggle this on and off with a little eye, you can see that we're going from green, which is in our base material where we're not overriding anymore. Or I turn this on and suddenly the override takes effect and we're keeping all of the other settings in here. We haven't overridden the specular amount, the Fresnel, the specular color, etc. It's only the diffuse color that we're overriding. So this is obviously a very simple example of how this works. I'm going to show you something a little bit more complex now. I'm going to come in and just delete my constant. So I'm going to select it, right click it and delete. So the next thing I want to do is add in one of the many procedurals that we have in Modo. So I'm going to come up again to add layer. I'm going to come down to enhance Modo textures, noise and bozo. Now again our green completely disappears because this bozo noise, black and white noise, is set to diffuse color so we're only seeing that in our scene now. Now interestingly uh, we do at the top of these layers have a couple of options very similar again to Photoshop, things like blend mode and opacity. 
Now currently our blend mode is set to normal, which means it's just going to sit right on top of whatever parameters come before it. So our green color is underneath and we're just completely overriding it, just putting this black and white texture on top. Now what we could do is set our blend mode to something like multiply, which is actually going to take that green into account and multiply my noise over the top of it. So again, very similar to Photoshop, but we're overriding in this stack. So we're getting these settings first, changing them, anything in the middle of the base shader and the base, uh, sorry, the base material and the base shader will override those settings. And then we're finally putting it all together in the base shader. So I'm actually going to turn this back to multiply, sorry, to normal for now. Uh, because this isn't really what I want my diffuse color to look like, I'm going to change a few settings in here. I'm going to set my gain to something like 80, and my bias to something like 75, just to give us a few little bits in here. Now I'm also going to go ahead and bring in another texture. So I'm going to go to Add Layer, I'm going to go to Textures and Cellular. Now just like before, where we completely overrode the original option, uh, where the bozo noise overrode the green, the cellular is now completely overriding the bozo, because again, they're both set to diffuse color. Now what I can do is inside of here, inside of the cellular, I could use those blend modes much like I did before, or I could use that opacity to pull this down so we can see a little bit of the cellular, but we can also see the bozo noise coming through beneath it. Now at the moment, these are both just sitting on top of each other, and I'm sure you can see how this could get quite complex quite quickly. Uh, so you do have control over groups of layers inside the shader tree. And you can bring in a group in two ways. You can add layer, group. Alternatively, you can select the layers you want to group together and hit control G. Now at the moment, this group, you can see in the effect, it's not set to anything, it's completely blank. So the group itself isn't really having much of an effect on these layers right now. However, what I could do is come in and set my group from diffuse color to something like, let's say, bump. And now it's overriding what those were originally set to, and everything inside of here is now contributing just to the bump map. So now we've taken a look at the procedurals we have available to us, I'm going to introduce you to the image-based texturing we can do. Uh, so I'm going to quickly rename my group by right-clicking it. We'll call this bump map. I'll just go and roll that up a little bit. I'm going to come, uh, just select my base shader, come into Add Layer, and to add an image map from disk, we need to come to the Image Map section, and we can load existing images, we can create new images, or we can use the Clip Browser to import images that or use images that are already available to us within our project. Now in this case, I want to load an image. Uh, we actually have Blacksmith Color 1 here, it's already selected, I'm going to click Open on that. And when this comes in, what we'll see is that this is set again to diffuse color by default. So now we've got our bump in the background and we also have our diffuse color, which is our map here. And just like our procedurals, these maps can be set to be any of these channels in here. So it is a very, very powerful system as soon as you kind of understand this idea of these overrides. Now another interesting side effect of this, however, as we stand currently, um, if I pull this over to the side, I come up and I create a sphere, what we'll notice is that my sphere has, sadly, exactly the same materials as this face. And that is not what I want. I want this to be a bright red shiny sphere. I don't want it to look like this at all. And the reason both of these objects have the same material is that this base material, this bump, and this diffuse color, well, these materials are applied to absolutely every single thing in our scene. At no point are we telling Modo that we only want it to be on this object. So how do we tell Modo to apply some materials to those objects and other materials to other objects? Well, as you may have guessed at this point, it is again an override system. So currently everything on this right hand side is being applied to everything. So we need to override that and tell Modo to only put specific materials on specific items. Now there's two ways we can do this. We can come and select an item in the viewport and I can hit M on my keyboard and this is going to set material. Now you give your material a name, in this case I've chosen face, you can choose a basic color, diffuse, specular, etc, and hit OK. And when we do, what you'll see, we have two things, two differences. First one is that in our shader items over here, we have a brand new group called face, and inside that face group we have a brand new material. Now the other thing that's happened is that our face here has turned completely white, whilst we still have the other shaders, the bump map and the color, on our sphere. So why is this happening? Well, if we go up to our face group and we take a look down here at the bottom in the settings and the properties, 
you can see that we have these kind of three sections here, three or four sections. And this is discerning what this group is applying to. So at the moment, this is applying to all items in our scene that have a tag type of material that is face. Now a second ago, I hit set material on this object and I called that face. So this object now has an attribute called face and it is an attribute type material. So what these three settings are saying, okay, I want you to dig down into all of my items that have a material tag saying face. And this could be multiple items in your scene. I could have 20 different faces, all of different people, all having the same material if I wanted. Uh, this is one way of affecting that. Now the reason that we have a white material on this now is because we're overriding from the bottom up to the shader. So what's happening is that we've got our base material with our green color, we've then got our bump map, and we've then got our diffuse color, which is our skin that we see over here. But at that point, Modo comes across this face group and says, well, actually, everything inside of here needs to go onto this object. And inside of here, we have a whole other material with whole other settings. So this is, at this point, just reading the default diffuse color, the default reflection, everything, and applying it to this group. So importantly, what we're doing is we're going from the bottom up to the base shader, and any groups that we come across, it's taking these settings into account. Now, we don't just have to do this on a material tag basis. We can do this on an item basis as well. So if I wanted to, I could come up to my base shader. I could come and add layer, and we see we have group in here too. Now, if I create this group, currently there's nothing inside of it, so nothing's changing whatsoever but I can come down into my item and instead of setting a material tag type, I'm gonna set my item to only be the sphere. Now currently nothing changes again because we have nothing inside the group, but I'm gonna come up to add layer. I'm gonna come down to special, actually textures, sorry. And we're gonna add a, let's add a checker texture to this. And you can see straight away that the checker diffuse color is now only applying to our sphere group because that's the override that we've set. Now I said a moment ago I wanted this to be nice and bright red, uh, so I'm actually going to delete my checker. I'm going to come into my sphere, add a layer, come down to uh, processing, come to constant, turn up the bright red, and you can see where, where I want to be. So my personal way of working, just to finish off this section, is to have a group for every object, or for every object group in my scene. So really what I would want is instead of having this face material inside of here, I'm going to delete that out. Just like I did for my sphere, I'm going to create a, another group. I'm going to come down to my item list. I'm going to click blacksmith. So everything in this group is going to be applied to this object. I'm going to pull my color and my bump map inside that group. And you can now see the bump is no longer affecting our sphere. It's only affecting this object. So I now have these two groups representing the different objects inside of my scene. Now at the moment they're both taking the same base material, but of course like you saw a second ago when I set the material, you can have a material per group as well. So that is a very basic introduction, I don't want to go further than that because that is a lot of information to digest, um, but I think the best way of looking at this is to just start playing around with it and seeing how these overrides work. Now in the render video I'm going to be showing you the shader library that ships with Modo and they have ways of having lots of preset materials you can just drag and drop onto objects and they appear of course over here in the stack and really looking at how those materials are constructed that's probably the best way to get started with the system so I highly recommend that. Uh, second thing is looking on the Modo site, also on the Luxology website. Uh, the community there shares a, shares a whole lot of shaders um, and also there's a lot of tutorials, a lot of free videos on this shader tree itself. So that is a quick look at the shader tree in Modo.